Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Continue on in our study <coughs> Lesson, so we reach support <coughs> the Shaykh he mentioned the third matter he said the third matter with regards to the virtues of Tawheed he said from the distinguishing characteristics of Tawheed is that it is the first obligation upon the responsible person. The first that which is obligatory upon the person in order to enter into this religion is Tawheed. The first thing that you need to know about is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how to worship Him. Tawheed, that's the assassin of the religion. It isn't other polit uh, dynamics such as politics or, you know, what is your relationship to Black Lives Matter uh, you know, how to make tech theater the government, uh, should we be making rebellion and revolt? You know, these aren't the first matters of the uh, of importance for us to know. What you need to know is who Allah is and how to worship Him alone. And <clears throat> that is what Tawheed is. Tawheed al-Ibadah, Tawheed al rububiyyah the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tawheed al uluhiya you know, uh, the various ways in which you as a servant worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> So he says, the first of which is obligatory upon the person in order to enter into this religion is Tawheed. And the first of that, which the person begins with in calling to Allah, the glorified and high, is Tawheed. Many evidences prove this. From them is a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umirtu and uqatil al-nas hatta yashhadu and la ilaha illallah he said the prophet sallallahu said i have been commanded to fight the people until they testify that none has the right to be worshiped except allah from them as well is his statement to muadh ibn jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an when he sent him to yemen he said inna kata'ti qawmin min ahli kitab fal yakun awla ma tad'u mi ilayh Ibadatullah Azza wa Jal. So the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad when he sent him to Yemen, he said, Verily, indeed, you are going to a people from the people of the book, meaning Ahl Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians. So let the first thing you call them to is the worship of Allah, the mighty and majestic. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, you are going to a people from the book, so let the first thing you call them to uh, is that they single out Allah the exalted with Tawheed. I think it doesn't require a lot of further explanation, but I think the point is that we can understand if we're sincere, if we're sincere in our call, if we're sincere as du'at, if we're sincere as practitioners of Islam, that our call and our duty is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to call others to that. And that should be our priority. That's where our emphasis should be. But many of the people have taken various side paths and various other things that they call to and sectarianism and just plain and simple false forms of dawah which do not complement the purpose of why we were created and do not actualize the purpose of why Allah Azza wa Jal created us. And that is to worship him and him alone. As we mentioned in the ayat, I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. That's why Allah created us. And in another narration of the same hadith, indeed you will encounter a people from the book. When you come to them, call them to testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Therefore, Tawheed is the first of which is obligatory upon the responsible person. So that shows us to know where our priorities should be. He says the fourth matter, from the distinguishing characteristics of Tawheed, is that it is a reason for safety and guidance in the dunya and the hereafter. Read this within the statement of Allah, the glorified and high, in which he says, "Alladina amanu walam yalbisu imanuhum bidhul, ulaika lahum al aman, 
وهم محتدون الله سبحانه وتعالى سيش كتاب الكريم It is those who believe and confuse not their belief with boom, wrongdoing, which is shirk. For them, there is security and they are guided. SubhanAllah, if you want peace and security in, in Syria, in Iraq, in Saudi, in wherever, wherever in the world, then the assass of that, the origin of that peace and stability is really going to come with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because then you have the aid and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some places do have peace and stability that don't worship Allah Azza wa Jal. They have shirkiyat. But you'll find that they have so many other issues because they don't have the Islam to guide their societies and the khair. It shows us ahabbat fillah, the importance of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all, all, all of this and this treaties from the signposts of Tawheed. This is what it's all about. The Shaykh then mentions, he said, therefore safety is within the hand of Allah and he does not give it except to the Muwahid who makes his religion purely for him, glorified and exalted be he. When this verse was revealed, as has come within the authentic uh, hadith, the affair was difficult for the companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all. Radi Allah ta'ala they came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, O Messenger of Allah, who from amongst us has not done wrong to himself? Because they were perplexed by that ayah. They were confused. They, they said, you know, all of us commit sins. We all have wronged ourselves. We all make mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aladina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanuhum bidhum. It is those who believe and confuse not their belief with, with, uh, with wrongdoing. For them there is security and they are glorified. So the meaning of that is that we have no safety or guidance because each of us has wronged himself. So the Prophet wasallam says, that is not it. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, not, that's not the meaning. He's saying, uh, have you not read the statement of the righteous slave, meaning look man, the wise, also in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the shirkul ladulmun alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily joining others in worship with Allah is a great dhulm indeed. It's a great uh, form of oppression indeed. So this was the wrongdoing that was meant in the other ayah. Because the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'in, they thought. All of us commit uh, mistakes, we all have shortcomings, we all oppress ourselves. How can we escape from that? But it, the Prophet ﷺ clarified for them that no, this is referring to shirk. That this is the wrongdoing, this is the type of zulm, this major zulm, this major form of oppression, which is shirk, shirk billah. The Prophet ﷺ upon him ﷺ explained wrong in this verse to mean polytheism that the boom that was done, it meant polytheism, it meant shirk. So that is from the characteristics of Tawheed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.